Hey guys, it's Sarah James. I live in the city, but I definitely don't let that get in my way of gardening. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this stand-up greenhouse for under $40 and in just a couple hours. Stay tuned to find out how. Materials are tough text corrugated paneling, pallet and scrap wood, wood closure strips, drill, tin snips, measuring tape, neoprene washered screws, drill bit, hinges, nail gun, and flashing. The pallets that I'm using are already broken down, but if you'd like to see my technique and favorite way of how I break down the pallets or remove the nails, you can check out my two videos on the links below. Now let's get started. I decided to use Tuftex polycarbonate panels on this project for a couple reasons. Besides being super lightweight and easy to install, it's also 20 times stronger than a 5 ounce fiberglass corrugated panel. It blocks UV radiation and it comes with a lifetime limited warranty. Tuftex offers a variety of panels, so always make sure to check their website for product description before you start on your job to make sure you're getting the right one. For this little greenhouse project, we're going to use the polycarbonate panels. I found this piece at Lowe's and I was quite impressed with how affordable it was. The panels come in 26 inches by 8 feet long, so I'm actually going to cut two pieces using my tin snips to get the length I want. For the viewers out there, if you don't want to use tin snips, don't worry. You can also use a utility knife or a circular saw if you use a plywood blade that's been reversed. For me, I'm using the tin snips and they work great. I'm able to cut through this pretty easily. Now that I have my two pieces, I can go ahead and overlap it by one corrugation, which is the minimum and maximum for the panels. And that way I can measure and get the size of the lid frame. Once I have my measurements, I'm ready to start cutting the wood. offers foam and wood closure strips. Today I'm going to be using the wood. When you purchase these at your local Lowe's store, they're not painted, but painting them white will reduce the heat buildup between the strips and the Tuftex panels while also extending the life of the panels. Once my closure strips were painted, I aligned them crown up on the frame and placed my cut panels with the overlap to make sure everything lined up. The wood closure strips match the corrugation profile of the Tuftex panels and are used along the rows where the screws are installed through the panels. Since these closure strips are aligned perpendicular to the corrugations, they're called horizontal closure strips. Vertical wood closure strips can be used on the final corrugation at each side of the lid and can be purchased at Tough Decks. For this project, we don't need it though. Before you attach your panels, it's really important to pre-drill first. That way you don't get any cracks in the panels and it can expand with the temperature. To pre-drill, you're going to want to use a bit that's 2 16ths to 3 16ths larger than the screw that you're using. The Tuftex panels are very flexible, so we need to pre-drill and install the screws on every other corrugation to make sure we don't have a problem with wind uplift. The screws should only be installed on the crowns of the corrugations. Rainwater will leak into the valleys of the corrugation, so you don't want holes in the valleys allowing water to leak into your greenhouse. Next, using your hex bit and your neoprene washer screws, you're ready to attach your panel. For this polycar panel, I'm going to be using the 2-inch neoprene washered screws, and I'm going to want to get it nice and snug, but not over drill so it doesn't crack the panel. <laughs> We have our lid all done, we're ready to start with the base. I cut two 2x4s two to the length of 38 inches and two at 42 to get the angle that I wanted. Next, I cut all the side and support boards to 22 inches long, measured and cut the boards for the front and back based on the width of my lid, then attached them to the legs. We cut all the wood down in the garage and now we moved everything up to the rooftop. It's a little windy out here, but we're going to be able to build this up today and get it done and painted and everything will be ready to go. Mm -hmm. I started off by attaching the support boards to the front and back, added a pre-cut scrap board for the plants to sit on, and then secured it into place. With everything square, I'm ready to attach the side boards and start on my bottom shelf. To do that, I'm measuring up to the height I want, making sure it's level, and attaching my support and my pre-cut boards for the shelf and nailing it into place. Once I'm ready to attach the lid, I make sure everything is lined up, then secure it with hinges and add a piece of flashing on the ridge of the roof. 
I have a lot of spare paint in my garage, so I picked a color and brushed some on to complete the look. I kept it light so my plants wouldn't overheat in the direct sun. Now that this project is complete, we're ready to get some plants in there and get ready for spring. I'm going to call this my little urban greenhouse. I hope you've enjoyed it, and until next time, happy building. <laughs>